I'm just dying. Okay, but I'm dying. We are back on the record. It is 2.29 p.m. Mr. Taylor, you're still under oath. Yes. You understand? Would you hold 10 seconds so I can sign this and have maybe... I can wait. Go ahead. I don't care. I just... That's okay. Okay. Ready? Everybody ready? Yep. Okay. Um, Mr. Taylor, who is Ashley Ware? <clears throat> She's a volunteer staff that works in the ministry on the staff. She's a volunteer staff? She work full time or part time? Yeah, she works uh, full time. And who is Christian Ware? Um, that's their ch child, their and baby. How old is that child? Uh, I'm not sure. Don't know. Um, infant or teenager, in between? No, I, I know it's definitely not a teenager. Young, very young. So. And who is <laughs> Clifton Ware? That's her husband. Are you related to them? Uh, no. No no biological relation? No. Did they live with you in 2013? Uh, no, not in 13, no. When did they live with you at any time? Yes, they did when they first came, and that was more in 2008, 9, somewhere around there. What do you mean when they... Um, when they first came. First came from where? Um, from Cleveland, Ohio. Kind of help them out and their children. <laughs> children or one? Um, well, they had more than one, so. And so they lived with you? Yeah. In your apartment? Yes. The two bedroom apartment? Mm hmm. Along, you have to answer yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Along with your two children? Um, well, you know, my two children went there every day, so. So. According to court order. So I have my children half the week. So where would these folks stay every day? Well, um, they had, I also had other friends in the city that I allowed them to go stay with. And they you opened allowed their home. them? To well, stay? they opened their home to them. What do you mean they allo you allowed them to go? Just misworded. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And your 2012 tax return, oh, who's Brooklyn Mitchell? Brooklyn? I don't know. You don't know who Brooklyn Mitchell is? No. Mm -mm. You have no idea? No. Brooklyn Never heard of that Mitchell. person? No, Brooklyn Mitchell. Nope. On <laughs> your 2012 tax return, you claim Brooklyn Mitchell as a dependent or an exemption. No, I don't think that's true or accurate. Well, this is what you gave us today. Yeah, or if it's, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, there must be someone um, I don't know who that is. Uh, Michelle probably can answer that. I'm not sure about this because I don't do my own taxes. So. <laughs> but I did carry them because I supported them that year. So, I mean, I know I carried, supported Clifton and his wife and their children. I helped them. You have no idea who Brooklyn Mitchell is? No, I, I, don't, I don't know that name, and I don't know why that's there. So I, it could be something that I'm not aware of. You wouldn't be aware that they were one of your exemptions and dependencies? Well, I don't know. I didn't handle that, so I would rather you ask her about that, Michelle. Ask her about your personal tax return? Yes. And it, I don't fill them out. You said that Christian, Ashley, and Clifton did not live with you in 2012. No, not in 12. I don't think. I'm not sure. I can't. Maybe my days are mixed up, so I'm not accurate. Well, you said it was back everything. in 08 and 09, not 12. I know, I know it's 08, 09. I can remember those times, yeah. But you, under oath, claimed all these people as your exemptions? Of course. Brooklyn, of well, course? Well, no, I mean, 
whatever happened in this was under oath and it was the truth. So, like I say, you need to go ask Michelle about well, no, this. No, I, I mean, it's your life. Your, your, it may be my on. life, but I have somebody taking care of this your, part. Okay, so these so, folks, none of those four folks lived with you in 2012. It's not true. And in 2013. I don't, I don't remember. I, I don't know which, what I'm looking at, so I can't your, answer okay. this. Let's, I can't let's, answer. It's the t 1040 U.S. Individual Income Tax Return 2012, I, I know is it what not? That, yes, I know okay, what that is. Okay, and this was given to me <laughs> by your attorney today. Okay. And on it, it has these four uh, dependency exemptions, does it not? Yes. Brooklyn, Christian, Ashley, and Clifton? Yes. Okay. And you're telling me you have no idea who Brooklyn Mitchell is? No, I, it may be a name in their... I don't know if I know their nickname or whatever, but I'm just telling you I don't know, so I'm not going to answer anymore. All right, so who is it that you support? What is it you do to support these people then? Well, I mean, they didn't have a job and they didn't have nowhere to stay, so I provided food and clothing, shelter for them. I don't know whose phone that is. That's it? mine. So you provided to these four people food, clothing, and shelter? Mm -hmm. You have to answer yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. On your salary? Yes. And your salary is listed as, as $28,897. Yes. Mm -hmm. And on that salary, you're saying you supported these four people? Yes. These four people? Yes. In including Brooklyn, who you don't know? Yes. I, I don't. Like I said, I can't answer certain things at this time because someone takes care of my 1040. But, you know, I have money saved up, you know, so I can, I can spend that money on helping other people if I want. So. How, how is the money saved up after you're earning 28000 When do you get well, money to save up? I save money from my paycheck, so. so. Is that because the ministry covers most of your overhead? Yeah. With your allowances? That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the blessing of nonprofit ministry. Is what? They let allow for different allowances that um, even though my salary may be low, I still can have a little bit extra to help a family like that. So, But your allowances, like your, your uh, car allowance and your housing allowance, those are taxable to you, aren't they? If you um, know, so he, he's not I don't expert. know. Yeah, I don't know all those things. Do you report those on your taxes? I don't know if I'm supposed to. I, I don't know. You have no it. idea. But you sign I have other people handle this for me. But you sign your tax returns, don't you? I have to, don't I? I think, yeah. Okay. And so you sign them <coughs> and you're not sure of what they mean? Well, not so much that. I have professional people who know what they're doing, so. Who would the professional people be? I don't know. You can ask Michelle. She knows who prepares your taxes? Yes. Do you keep receipts for all the... Um, Expenditures that you say you have for these folks? Um, these four? I'm not sure. Um, not positive. When you give them support, do you give them cash? Um, I have helped them with cash before, uh, but nothing large, you know. Do you um, pay their rent? Pay their rent. Uh, I mean, they were living with me, so I was Not spending. in 2012, you said, or 13. You okay. said 08, no, 09. I don't pay their rent. No. So you don't pay their rent. <laughs> no. Do you give them a check for some funds? Uh, no. No check? Mm -mm. No check, cash but not large amounts. <clears throat> you don't pay their rent. Do you buy them food? Yes. Mm -hmm. When do you they buy were. food? How does that work? Do you give them money or do you go out and go through the grocery shopping? No, I just give them money. Cash? Um, my card. A bank Credit card, card? Banking debit card or, uh, you know. But when are you saying do I do this? Because I don't do this now. So. Well, this is 2012 Okay, you're talking about, so you're asking during those years. Yeah, right. so Where that's you probably. you them? Yeah, well, that's probably the way I did it when I did do it. It's probably the way you did it? Maybe. I had cash. I have debit, debit card. Or you would hand way. them your debit card? Yeah. To go spend? Yeah. 
Okay. And how much do you think they used on your debit card? I don't know. I didn't keep that. Was it your personal debit card or Jam Um Most likely it was my personal card. Most likely, but maybe yes. not? No, I think it was my personal card. Not Jam mm -mm. you have to answer The only yes time no? they used Jam and My card is on ministry business. And they were handling a lot of ministry business, so that's separate. So were they being given money from the ministry's debit card if they were doing ministry business? Uh, yeah, of course. In any time any volunteer does anything on the ministry business, um, you know, they are able to, um, like if they're going out of town or whatever, they're able to buy food because the ministry takes care of all those expenses. It's normal. So the ministry does, but not you personally? Like I say, on ministry business, that's when okay. the card is used. When it's something personal, I've helped them with my own money. So are you saying that you provided more than 50% of the support for these four people? Um, I, yeah, of course. I mean, they didn't have nowhere to stay, nothing. But you didn't pay their rent. Do you know where they were living? Pay their rent? What, what, what are you saying? I asked you if you paid their rent, and you said no. No, I mean, they live with me, right? Are you talking about the times that they live with me? I'm only talking about 12 and 13. So. Oh, okay. No, no, of course not. Of I don't course really, not what? I, don't, I didn't pay their rent okay, from so, my but acknowledgement. to claim you? them, you have to provide a certain level of support. So are you saying that you spent, or, or I'm sorry, that you supported them in more than 50% mm -hmm. of their expenses? Um, it has to be if it's on that thing. But you can't tell me how or anything yeah, about it. Yeah, because I don't it. handle all those things anymore. I'm, I'm totally out of that. So I would rather you ask someone who knows. I, I'd rather just say to you, I don't know. So there's no proprietorship of me. There's line. a tax preparer name on the return. Okay, but what, right. I'm, what I'm trying to figure out, and I, I don't want to depose them. I, I want to just mm -hmm. get a hand on this. You're saying that this is not JMMI mm -hmm. expenditures. These are personal expenditures. That you personally, let me no. finish, that you personally play, paid more than 50% of their support, mm -hmm. so you claim them as exemptions, but you can't tell me how. Uh, actually, I would like to say I don't know. Ask Michelle. That's she would know what say. you spent daily on these folks? They would know because they handle all my personal and ministry stuff. Who's they when you say they? Well, I mean Michelle handles all personal and ministry. <clears throat> How much have you um, personally donated to JMMI in the last five years? If you uh, know. Approximate, I don't, that's okay. I don't, I don't really know. Um, you know, I can't say from all the sacrifices. I can't say. What does that mean from all the sacrifices? I mean the sacrifices of, you know, giving up things. No, no, I'm talking about financially, not oh, money. Oh, so, no, I, I can't tell you. But you know. do tell people how much you've given, yeah, don't you? Um, I have told them the sacrifices I've made. You've put a dollar amount on that, haven't you? Oh, sometimes. I, I've, I've given up. Yes, I've told them that over the years I have given a large sum of money to this ministry. Okay, so what sum of money do you say when you do that? Well, you said not in dollar amount. I'm talking about in sacrifices. No, you, you put a dollar amount on it. I know, because it is a dollar amount. Okay, then tell but, me what dollar course, amount you use um, when you tell people. Oh, millions. I've given up millions for this. Given in up sacrifice. or oh, only in sacrifice? In sacrifice, yes. Millions? Yes. How do you arrive at that figure? Well, I mean, from the opportunities I've had to do other things and that kind of thing. That would have paid you over a million, that would have paid um, you millions. Way more than really? that, yes, of course. What kinds of things would those be? Well, for number one, I'm a chef. I completed my, um, in college, a degree. And so I could, number one, have my own business, like my brother who's a chef does, and that alone could Is bring a millionaire? In, no. But Chefs usually aren't. That's if they don't write books and do multiple chains. There's a way you can do it where I know a lot of my friends who have did very but well. But you've said you, you've used the word donate. You haven't used the word sacrifice. When you're 
talking well, on that's your, what I on, mean let me finish. Okay. when you're talking on your radio or your mm -hmm. your conference call or up mm -hmm. on stage you say I have donated millions to JMMI that's right but you're not talking dollar amount no and the people know what I'm talking about oh you I've, think they understand oh because I've explained of course you can't just listen to one show that I do and uh, expect to understand what I'm saying if you don't follow I've the I've listened ministry. to more than one show. Oh, you got to listen to more than three, four, twenty, or a hundred to hear everything. Yeah. Uh, the JMMI contribution report for, for 2013 shows that you donated $42,000 to JMMI in 2013. Is that true? If that's what the report says. How can you donate more than you actually have made in the last several years after a bankruptcy? Because in this kind of ministry, people will walk up to me and want to give me personal gifts of this amount of money, and I give it over to the ministry instead of receiving it. And I have them write it out to the ministry instead of me. So you're saying that if, I mean, isn't that a double dip? If you're saying that people go up and give you money and you say, write it to the ministry, um, and then you get credit for that donation, as does the person who made it? Well, you know, that's my personal way of showing also contribution of people who want to give me money personally for my life, and I just tell them to give it to the ministry. <coughs> Do you report that as gift income to you? No, because I tell them to write it out to the ministry. So how do you come up with 42000 that you donated when it didn't come from you, it came from a third party? Well, we use those records to show what I am, you know, beside my tithes and offerings that I give out of my paycheck. We just show kind of what uh, is being given to me on a yearly basis or presented to me, actually. So. You know, sometimes it's higher or lower, but... Um, People come up and give you cash? No. Never cash? No. Do they write a check out to you, David Taylor? Uh, they have, but I don't receive it. I tell them to scratch it out and write it in the ministry's name. But then you get credit for the $42,000. It just shows that I, I channel that money there instead of to myself. So you're saying you don't accept cash? No. If somebody were to give cash, who would it go to? JMMI. No, personally, I mean. JMMI. But whom? Uh, offering bucket, offering plate, uh, I don't. Well, if yeah. somebody's going to give you $5,000 in cash, who mm -hmm. would that be handed to? Uh, the people who take up the money and count the money. And that could be anybody. What if it staff. wasn't, you think, I'm not talking about somebody putting in a donation bucket. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about somebody's got $5,000 cash and they want to give it to JMMI. Who would be the person that would be designated to receive that kind of donation? Um, well, our financial committee, um, Michelle is over that, so you could just say her. So put her. Michelle would be who was designated to receive cash donations of a large amount. Yeah, to put it in the ministry, yeah. That's really a, I don't know how to answer that question. Why? I really don't, because it, mostly it don't, people don't give like that. They give into the offering plate. They never give it to us personally. They give into our envelopes and they, or if they're going to put cash, it gives it in the, in the bucket. So honestly, I think we should scratch that. I, we've never received money like that. The money we receive comes through donation plates. And then it's taken in the back and counted and deposited in the ministry. So it would have to be uh, at a service. Yes. So when Debbie gave you a couple, you know, 1.2 million or wherever we are on that, um, she did it at a service. Um, I don't. I don't recall. I'm not quite sure when. I know she gave a wire. Yeah. From what I know, it's a wire. So. A wire transfer. Yeah, and people, so how, people do that all the time in our ministry. So how would that be that 
that would be set up? Who would be doing that at your um, ministry? I know um, Michelle is over that. So did you talk to Debbie about this while you're transfer? Uh, no, Michelle. You had no conversation with Debbie about that? No. Did you ever uh, request or in any way talk to Debbie about contributions to the to the ministry? Um, no, I mean, I talk to everybody who comes to the meeting about that, so that would be yes. Other than at a general meeting, did you have any smaller uh, group conversations with her about money? Really, no. None? No, not that I know of. Other than when she had already given money and said she wanted to give, so I had Michelle finish up talking to her about that. So you did talk to her after she had given money? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I wanted to know what was going on, and uh, so Michelle filled me in, and I talked with her briefly. You know. So what did Michelle tell you? Just that she wanted to donate, and uh, that she had given through wire and that kind of thing. And so then you talked to Debbie. Yeah. And what did you say to Debbie? Um, I just told her thank you, and uh, that was. About it, and I, you know, the ministry appreciated that. Did you inquire of her uh, the source of those funds? No, I, because I, I never usually do that when people give money like that. Would it be a concern to you if uh, it meant that she was ultimately going to be homeless in the next year? Would it be a concern? Of course, to you? I would have never allowed that. I didn't find out till afterwards about this. What did you find out? I mean, just. What you were telling me, you know. What Mr. Potts shared with you? Mm -hmm. Right. A anybody else? Um, uh, Rick, I mean, of course, <laughs> came up to me in the first court proceedings and started saying stuff like that, but I didn't believe him because of his the kind of spirit and character he had, so I didn't really take nothing he said true. But when Mr. Potts shared with me certain things, because I, be I saw what was, what had really happened. And what was your understanding of what had happened? Uh, that she had donated a large sum. And um, she gave a lot of money that she didn't really, a lot of it she didn't have to give. I mean, beside the stuff she has to pay for. So I'm sorry, say that again? I said that uh, I found out that she gave a lot of her money that uh, she didn't have to give, she couldn't afford a lot of that. Did Debbie ever talk to you about her finances? No, that's the thing. I'd Did she ever talk to Michelle, if you know? No. Um, Did you have any understanding of what her financial wherewithal was? No, we sure didn't. Do you understand there's a court order that says she can't give any money to JMMI or any other? If you know. I said, did you know? Uh, no. You aren't, you aren't aware of the court order? No. The court order says she can't give you any money? No. This just was? No, it's been in effect for a long time. Okay, no, I didn't know that. Okay, she didn't tell you that? No. Did Debbie tell you that um, she was not seeing her children or had severely cut back seeing her children based on her finances? No. She didn't share anything about that with you? Um, the only thing I found out through Michelle that she had told Michelle is just that uh, what uh, her ex-husband was doing to her. And what was uh, that? Well, basically trying, just keeping her from the children and taking her to the rigmarole. 
do you understand that he can't do that personally, that the court has to issue orders? Irrelevant. Well, Irrelevant. So well, 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 that's, no, I, I want his understanding. For what, no. for what purpose? So that Debbie doesn't repeat. Debbie's not on trial here. No, it's He's not, not on trial here. It's not about trial. What's it for? Do you understand there are court orders issued from the judge about Debbie's parenting time? Um, if you know. No, I, I, don't, I don't. I'm not involved in that. But. So you were led to believe that um, somehow her ex-husband Rick is doing this? Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Did um, Debbie ever tell you that she had violated court orders? Uh, no, I don't know any of that. She didn't tell you anything about that? No. Do you know if she told Michelle? I don't know. You can ask Michelle. All right, given, and you understand that uh, Mrs. Frazier cashed out about $600,000 in retirement assets that generated a very significant IRS bill. You aware of that? No, after he told me. <coughs> You weren't aware of it before then? No, of course not. But you're now aware that she's got a big IRS bill? Yeah, I would have never let her give that if I knew that. Um, were you aware at one time she owned her house free and clear? Uh, no. Are you aware that because she's given everything else away that she now has a significant mortgage that means she doesn't have any equity in her house anymore? Um, I think I heard from Mr. Potts or Michelle one that she's, um, I guess, got a line of credit off her home to pay lawyers through what the situation that her ex-husband is taking her through. So that's, that's all I know about that. Do you realize she also um, had to pay uh, taxes, though, on the... Yeah, I would have never let her give that to the ministry if I knew she paid taxes. I teach people to pay taxes, pay their taxes to the government, so... That's one of your tenants? Hmm? It's one of your tenants to pay your taxes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you accept any more money from Debbie Frazier? No. You would not? No. Going forward? No. Have you told her that? Of course. I mean, since I found this out, I had a phone conversation and just told her, you know, to, um, I just asked her why she didn't tell us, you know, all of these things. And what'd she say? Um, she just felt like she didn't feel like she needed to tell me anything. She just felt led to give the money, so. So you called her on her cell phone or house phone? No, I had my exec, Michelle called her for me and patched me in to okay. talk with her. So you and Michelle were sort of on a conference call with yeah. her? Mm -hmm. just okay. recently, yeah, just recently. When would that have been? Maybe in the last week or two, something like that. So... You had a conversation where you told Debbie you're not going to take any more money yeah. from her. Well, I don't think I worded it like that, but I told her that she shouldn't have. She should have communicated better with her financial situation, and if she had bills to pay, like the RS and things like that, I wouldn't have never taken the money in the first place if I had known that information, especially that amount. Even if she wanted to donate, I would have told her, don't give this amount. You need to keep some for your life and that kind of thing. So, but I so, don't get involved in all of our contributors' life like that. You if, know? if somebody gives you a, a really big number, like over a million dollars, you don't say to them, can you afford this? I really haven't done that because um, I think it probably would be wise now through this to just start doing that. But usually... People who have given are very responsible, and they can do it, you know, so I, you know, this caught me totally off guard. 
Do you realize there are court orders telling Debbie Frazier that she cannot bring her children to St. Louis and participate in JMMI? Uh, I heard about that. Michelle told me about that part. When was that? Uh, that was some time ago. I can't tell you when exactly. Ballpark it. This year, last year? I mean, yes. I don't just know. Just ballpark. I just don't know. So you're aware <laughs> that, that she can't bring the children to JMMI? Yeah. And since you became aware of that, has she brought them? Uh, no. Not, I haven't seen them around ex at all. Did you meet with the children? Uh, meet with them? What, what do you mean? Did you have conversations with them? Never. I wouldn't. Oh, yeah. They came to the church, so, yeah, that, at the church. <coughs> Say hello and... What else? What That's about it. Thing? Just hello and just greeting them like I've greeted others. Did you talk to them about face-to-face -face visits with Jesus? In a meeting? No, with them. No. No? Mm -mm. You have to answer yes or no. No. Did you give them any of the books or DVDs? Uh, no. Did somebody else, if you know, from your ministry, maybe? I don't know. Couldn't say. <clears throat> um, given that that Debbie is basically destitute, you understand that? You have to answer yes. Or no. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's an assumption for the question. He doesn't know that, except if you tell him what I told him. Right. Mm -hmm. Given that you understand yeah, from mm -hmm. us, um, would those be circumstances under which you'd be willing to give Mrs. Frazier back some of her money? Exactly uh, form of the question. Go ahead. So we again now. Excuse me. Hold on a second. Let me wire up again. Given that you understand Mrs. Frazier to be destitute and it's impacted her ability to have housing, her ability to see her children, uh, under those circumstances, are you willing to give Mrs. Frazier back some of her money? Um, should I answer this? Yes, you go ahead and answer it. Yes, um, you know, I've shared that with the board. I took what he told me back to the board um, concerning her present circumstance, and I would love to do that if we had the money. Presently we don't, but um, I told them that I'm willing to, if the money comes in and through what we raise, to support and help her, of course. So would that mean you would give her a check back for some of the funds that she had given? Um, I don't know how we would do it, but I, I, we would find out the legal right way to do that. and. Uh, and uh, issue her that. Uh, those funds, issue those yeah. funds to mm -hmm. her? Ob objection to the form of the question. First of all, he's going to require guidance professionally. I understand that. And how we can, should, otherwise, mm -hmm. what source. So the concept is fine to talk about specifics. He certainly is not asking him to, to answer those kinds of questions. Right. Yeah. Um, Has Debbie talked about relocating to St. Louis with you or with anyone not that the, you know? Not that I know of. Has um, have, has anyone talked to you about her oldest daughter going to college there? No. Katie? Do you know if she's talked to Michelle about that? I'm not sure. Are you aware that Debbie refers to JMMI uh, in the presence of the children as their second family? No. <clears throat> Are you aware that Debbie had um, people from JMMI staying at her residence for overnight at least some period of time? Uh, yes, I did know. I had heard about that. What had you heard? Uh, just that whenever some come from St. Louis in town that uh, she let them stay there for a day or two. Do you know how many people would be at any given time? Just one uh, from what I knew. And 
that would at times, do you understand it, that uh, at times that would be when her children were having parenting time with her back when that was allowed? No. You didn't know didn't. that? Huh. Now, when you came into town, there were times, were there not, that mm -hmm. you used Deborah Frazier's vehicle? Or someone that was driving you used Deborah Frazier's vehicle? Maybe, I don't know. I wasn't aware. You weren't aware in whose car you were driving? No. We rent cars when I come here. So if they switch up the cars, I wouldn't know. Or I'm just going for the ride wherever they're taking me. You have no input about any of that? I don't handle that. So you wouldn't recognize that you were repeatedly driven in a car that was owned by the same car that was owned by Debbie Frazier? Well, I know what a car looks like now, but what I'm saying is during those times, I didn't know we rent cars. When I come in town, they rent the cars for me. Did you think so it's always the same car that got rented? It's usually different, you right. know, but they usually rent the same kind of car too. Uh, so. so you didn't realize it was rather regularly just Debbie's car? Because I, I, I was never in her car regularly. Did she ever drive you around? <clears throat> no. When you say it's up to the board, now the board includes <laughs> Michelle? Yes. You? Uh, yes. And who else? Um, I'm not sure you can ask Michelle. You don't know who's on the board? Uh, totally. I would rather you get the accurate information because I don't want to be accused of answering falsely like I have been other times when I've tried to guess. So I just rather you, I'm telling you I don't know, just ask her. Michelle How many people know. are on the board? Don't know. Just you don't know. A, no. Don't you have to have board meetings? Uh, yes, we do have board meetings. So don't can you count around the table how many people there are. <laughs> well, our board also grows at the same time. So I just rather you um, just get that information somewhere. Else. The last time you had a board meeting was when. Um. So on the phone, I think. Um beginning it's been the beginning of the year in January can't exactly tell the, the date but it was on the phone <coughs> yeah how did you meet Deborah Fazer? Um, she came to the meetings uh, that we hold in, in Taylor, Taylor Michigan when Deborah Fraser uh, volunteers, do you pay her travel costs when she comes to St. Louis? No. No? No. She's on her own? Yeah. So if she said that you, she was being reimbursed for that, would you say that's not accurate? Um, if she says she's being reimbursed, then... Um, I, I don't know what's going on there. I don't handle that part of the ministry. But your understanding is she's not? From what I know. I, I really wouldn't like to answer that. I'd just rather say I don't know. But other people, you do reimburse and assist them with their costs, right? Of, of course, but I don't always know who that is. I don't handle that part of the ministry. All right, so would that be something that Debbie Frazier would be eligible for? Of course. And if you knew she didn't have any personal money or it was taking away from her ability to support herself, would that be something you would provide for her? Of course. Would you provide her with lodging in St. Louis? Of course. How would you do that? Well, just like we'd provide that for others, you know, who if they are on a ministry trip, that's if they are under the ministry banner take care of their expenses. So if Debbie Frazier moved to St. Louis, mm -hmm. would you pay for her um, residence there? No, we don't do that. We, I, we don't pay for anybody's residence to move. They have to get a job or, you know, if they're going to relocate, uh, that's not a responsibility the ministry incurs. But it was for, you said, for the Ware family. No, it wasn't. They just... They didn't have nowhere to stay for a few days or however long we were helping them. And then it found out they didn't have a place to stay. So I, I opened up my home 
to their family. And you had never met those folks before? Uh, mm, well, it wasn't that. They had been in the ministry for a little time. We got a chance to know them. So, How would they have been in the ministry? They, they lived had, somewhere else? Yeah, they came down and was active for maybe a few months, and I got a chance to know them a little bit. And then they came and you supported them? Yes. You stated in your last deposition that you would like to hire Mrs. Frazier. Mm -hmm. You have to answer yes or no. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, have you explored that? Um, explore, what do you mean by explore? Explored whether you're going to hire her. What do you mean ex by explore? Uh, what, what is, can you rephrase well, that? Well, you said that you would like to hire her, so have you yes. done anything about that? Uh, not at this time. We haven't added anybody on yet. We have to wait till the finances is there for that kind of thing. So when somebody gives you $1.2 where does that money go? To what, to what? It goes into ministry operations. So it goes into running JMMI. Mm -hmm. You have to answer yes or yes. no. Yes. Mm -hmm. So who has been on the JMMI payroll uh, in the last 90 days? Um, Michelle Brannon is really <coughs> the only one on the salary payroll and myself at this time. Just the two of you? Mm-hmm. You have to answer yes. Yes. Or no. mm -hmm. Do you have a former or current FBI agent associated with Jan Mamai now? Um, no. Has there been? No. Never had anybody with the FBI involved? No. At one point, your mother and father were on the JMMI Board of Directors. Mm -hmm. You have to answer yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do and you recall that time period? Um, I think it was, you know, I, I don't remember. I know it was a few years ago. So I think I'm not quite sure. It, then they resigned, did they not? No, they didn't resign. They didn't resign? No. You filed paperwork showing they resigned. No, it shouldn't say it, resignation. And then at 30 days they were back on the board? No. You don't recall that? No. They were on, they were off, they're on, and aren't they off now? No. Uh, yeah, they're off, but the way you were saying this isn't the way things happen. No. <coughs> um, what did they, did they receive compensation? No. They weren't paid at all? No. Are they both living? Yes. What are their names? Uh, Katie and James Taylor. K A. K A T E. K A T E, not Kate. Katie. Mm -hmm. K A T E, and you, you call T -I -E, it. T I E. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And James. Taylor. Mm -hmm. And where do they reside? In Memphis, Tennessee. James Taylor, the same one that prepares your tax returns, same yeah. one as your father? Mm -hmm. He has an income tax business. Oh, so your father prepares your taxes. Mm, well, not now. Um, he did at one time. We had him doing that because he has a very integral business. It's been around for over 30 years. So when your dad did your taxes 2012, just a couple of years ago, he's listed as the tax preparer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that made the judgment then apparently to include these four people as exemptions? Yes. So you're saying that your parents were never off the board for any period of time other than when they finally came off now? Yes. I've looked at that document. Do you have it with you? Okay. This. Okay, on June 18th, 2013, 
Well, let me ask you first. Who is Bill Hody? Um, Do you know that name? Yes, Bill who is Hody. Uh, he is a minister in the in JMMI. He is. A, what do you have to do to be a minister? Well, you have to qualify. How? Basically, through being trained. By training. Whom? Well, in this case, I train ministers, but he was a minister before I knew him. So, in the other church, they had. So he was already a minister before he met me or is our it, organization. Does that mean he's licensed? Uh, I don't know. You probably have to ask him. Well, how do you, you just accept that he's a minister? How do you know he's a minister? Well, I mean, I can see from the qualification of how he handles himself. And I've been in ministry for 25 years, so I know. So you can just tell by looking at somebody if they're a minister? Well, if they say, if I know they have ties to a reputable church before and and if they come and start working in our ministry and I see their expertise, then yes, I can tell. Be, you don't have to be ordained? Um, well, yeah, you can be ordained, but the ordinations is not what makes you a minister. So do you, when, when you accept someone as a minister, do you then do a background check to see whether they were legitimately associated with any of these places? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, I just have uh, people on the staff or board check backgrounds do investigation like or what? if I if I don't need that if I already know the leaders who I already know are reputable then I don't have to do that all right so you're saying how old is mister is it Hody yes mm -hmm. how old is, do you think he is? um I think I'm not sure I think he's 40 I don't know let me just say I don't 40 know. somewhere around not, there. no no he's not 40 I'm just saying I don't know okay um, <laughs> Do you know if he's related to Debbie Frazier? Uh, yes, I found out they're cousins. And in June 18th, 2013, you paid Debbie Frazier's cousin, Bill Hody, $2,000. What was that for? Um, that was um, a ministry gift what to bless him. <coughs> oh, a from ministry some, gift or to honor bless him. Or uh, uh, honorarium, that what we call it. It's the name of it. When you minister or when you do any service for the ministry, we we give honorariums. And what do you have to do to get an honorarium? Well, speak or minister, do some form of ministry in the church or ministry. Do you give these out routinely? If I have a guest speaker or if I have somebody come and do a service for the ministry, yeah. It's $2,000? It's not normally just two thousand. It than depends. That it depends. It could be more than that. Yeah. <laughs> it, and how long do they stay and talk? Um. Depends. Maybe a whole service could go for like two or three hours. And you make <coughs> two thousand dollars. Oh. Yeah, that's. That's uh, not standard. How is it not standard? It's not. It could be more or less, depending on the qualification or um, the donation, the work that they do that night for the Lord. So how much you pay them depends on how much you receive in donations in some way? Um, sometimes. So you have... But this, for him, was not just any one service. It was just his involvement in helping the ministry. In general, he didn't give a service. Right. And who makes that decision of who to give that kind of money to? Uh, the board and myself. So this was just a, a general gift? Um, it was an honorarium, as I said. Now, do you give Mr. Hody a 1099? Um, I think I did. I'm not sure. <coughs> I didn't do it, but... Sure, on your normal. behalf, somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody gave a 1099. Mm -hmm. Because that, there are, there are lots of payments to Mr. Hody in, in several thousands of dollars over the course of time. Okay. Right? No, uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's lots. I don't... Well, they total thousands of dollars, more than the two. It's not wasn't a one-shot deal. You acknowledge that? Um, I only remember 
giving or allowing that to happen maybe twice a sit. Okay, and, and, and it's your understanding that um, you uh, do a 1099 to him and he's to report that as his income. Exactly. Um, so each time that um, somebody comes and you pay them an honorarium or for just whatever you think is their mm -hmm. good guy or whatever, you give them a 1099. Yes, that's the, what the law requires. Yeah, we did request the 1099s, but we haven't gotten them. Maybe they're in the package tomorrow. Um, in June of 2013, there's over $6,000 worth of charges for the Disney Resort Hotel in Anaheim, California. Do you remember that? Yes. And did you go? Yes, I was there. And who were you with? Um, I know it was four staff. I can't remember exactly who all went, but we were um, down there in Orlando for a meeting and then we also went <coughs> for vacation, yes. To Disneyland? Yes. And the JAMA I paid for that? Yes. And so do you report that on your income when you get paid for a vacation? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not into the legal part. I have people take care of that for me. Do you give uh, the staff 1099s for uh, paid vacations? Um, I, I don't know the financial situation okay. behind all what, that. So. What four staff members were there? Like I said, I can't remember who they were. Oh, yeah. These were in Anaheim, California, so apparently you did Anaheim and Orlando? Mm hmm You have to answer yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you, you took staff to Orlando and Anaheim for a vacation at Disney Resorts? Um, it isn't quite like that, okay. you know, so I have different staff that accompany me to different cities I go into. So when I was in California that year and we went to Disney World at the same time, yeah, the staff go, I treated them to that. And so the same thing in Orlando when that happened, <coughs> but right. I don't just, uh, just take them there. We are having a meeting engagement. And then on the time off, I allowed that to happen. And Jam, am I paid the six thousand dollars for the resort yes. charges? Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Of course, even for the vacation. Yes, of course. All right. So, who was there at, in Anaheim, Anaheim, California? I don't remember. You don't remember who you went with? No, it's been so long, you know. And I travel all the time with different groups, so. And all on Jam, am I's dime? <clears throat> well, that's you. What do you do when you have a, a, a staff who you need to go help and they're not getting salary, but they're volunteering their time, what, they're supposed to pay their own plane tickets? No, uh, the ministry take care of that because the ministry is using them on the road to do things. So we take care of basic expenses. And if there's a um, vacation thrown in there, which is not always, we allow that to happen as and a benefit. You, and you pay for that? Yes. Okay. But you can't say if you issue them any kind of gift or receipt or 1099s for that benefit? Gift. No, I, I don't, I don't okay. know the legal. And so you went to both Orlando and An Anaheim and paid for vacations for staff members, but you don't know who they are? No, I can't remember exactly who it is. I'd rather not say until we Was, figure it out. <coughs> um, were your children included? Uh, my children were there with me in Orlando <coughs> on and, Anaheim. And did uh, JMMI pay for them? Um, I think so. I'm not sure. I don't think. I usually, when I go on a vacation, the ministry give me a vacation bonus, and it comes out of that. So, A vacation bonus? And, and I don't see that reported as income anywhere in your tax return. Well, 
I mean, you got to go to the people who handled that. They, they can explain You that. don't know anything about your own finances? Not a lot. I have professionals take care of that and people who know about nonprofit business. So, But I can assure you I'm not doing anything illegal. Well. Everything we have is open, so it's nothing to hide. You can see everything we have on our papers. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that your conclusion is accurate. Well, that's However, your opinion. Right. That's your opinion. Uh, did Debbie Frazier go on either of the Disney Resort um, trips? Not that I remember. I don't. You don't remember? You said there's four people, and you can't remember who they are. Uh, I mean, it's been a while, and I have different people who will go, so I, I don't remember, actually, but I know I had a group with me. <clears throat> Do you go to Disney resorts every year? Not every year, no. But mostly? Um, no. Honestly, I hadn't been to Disney World in, um, before this time, and probably, I don't know, maybe three years, four, five, something like that. So where was the meeting <coughs> that you had in uh, Anaheim? Um, it was in Anaheim. Where? I mean, what, what organization or uh, whatever? I can't remember exactly when, where that was. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, all right, on September 6th, 2013, uh, JMMI wrote a check to Charter Place for $1,350 with the memo line recording it as, ta as T. Period Taylor's rent. Is JMMI paying um, rent for your ex-wife, Tabitha? Um, no, I don't. I don't know what that is. I can't answer that. You have no idea why thirteen hundred and fifty dollars? No. Would be paid, and it would be marked rent. No. Um, <laughs> there are actually several monthly payments: October, November, etc. That same year, made to Charter Place with the same notation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite sure. You probably have to ask Michelle about that. Does Tabitha work in your ministry? No. But somehow her rent's being paid. I don't know about that. No, we don't do that, I'm sure. Who would, who would T. Taylor be made for? I'm not sure. You probably need to ask um, the financial advisors about that. Well, let me show you okay. cancel checks we've received. Um, okay. It's from JMMI Ministries, Charter Place, $1,350. September 6, 2008, it's marked, I'm sorry, 2013. Mm -hmm. And it's marked in the memo line, T. Period Taylor's Rent. Okay. And who is this person's signature on that account? That's uh, a lady who has died recently, but she was with us for many years, Mary in France. Mary in France? Mm -hmm. Yes. When did she die? Uh, about, it was last year, I think. I'm not sure the exact date, but. Did, did she have, she obviously had signatory authority on this yeah. check? Mm -hmm. uh, a checking account? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then. That's different. Okay. Then there's a September 10th, 2013 check um, sixteen hundred dollars rent for Michelle Brannon mm -hmm. and I'll show you this one mm -hmm. you can tell in the memo line is for Michelle and it's sixteen hundred dollars okay. is uh, Jam am I paying Michelle's rent I really can't answer to what this line of financing was for so you know, you may see one thing but not know what's really happening, so it would be better to ask Michelle and the financial, those who deal with the finances. So you're saying that you don't watch over the finances at all, that you do not uh, look at to see who's receiving money properly or improperly? That's not true. I have a firm. My 
my way of looking is having a professional firm Who's and that? an accountant to do that. Ex Michelle, she knows. You don't know who the firm is. Um, I I think I know their name, but I I just I don't I don't think I have it right. So just well, wasn't ask that her when about your dad that. was doing the accounting? What you said now? Wasn't that when your dad was doing the accounting? What are you talking about? Um, what are you, you you're confusing two things? I'm, I'm so, he was doing my personal income taxes. What, he didn't what do, you, do JMMIs? Uh, he may have. I'm not sure around that time, but I also had firms or accountants. Thank you. What do you think of those? Hold on. So how many different firms have you had using your, or, or preparing your financial information? I can't answer. I don't know. Michelle handles that. Hmm. You have to answer that. Yes. Question. Okay, on November 4th, 2013, JMMI made a purchase of $9,560 from Amini's Galleries in St. Louis, which is a store that specializes in pool tables and game rooms and jute boxes. Mm -hmm. What was that purchase <coughs> for? Um, I'm not sure. You probably need to ask. You have Michelle. no idea? You probably need to ask Michelle. I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember what that's about. <laughs> I mean, that's just about a year ago. Did anything come into any of your buildings that uh, was a pool table or something resembling that? No, we didn't buy a pool table. You so didn't buy a pool table? No. Did you buy a jukebox or no. ping pong or? No. You can't, a $9,000 expenditure? And you can't go by, you know, just the name of a company that sounds like it's a juke, because they, it could be something else they have in there that could serve ministry purpose or whatever there, whatever Well, give me an example. I don't know. You don't know what $10,000 would be spent on? I have confidence in very integral people with our finances, so I trust them. So you would have to ask them. So anybody on the board could authorize that kind of purchase and sign the check? Not anyone, only those who have the power to sign checks. And who are they? I don't know. I've shared with you. I don't know. Ex Michelle. You have no idea? No. I know I'm one of them. And you know Michelle's one of them? Yes. Anybody else that you know of? No. So Michelle would have complete discretion to spend almost $10,000 on something? If she knew, uh, she ran it by the board. But you don't even know who's on the board. You can't tell me who's on the board. Um, like I share with you, that you can ask all this information, and they'll share what you want to know. But I have a process that people go through before they spend large okay. sums of money. Okay, but you don't know what it is. Yes, you know I do. The they go through the board. They, right, things you're are on approved. the board. Yes, I am on the so board. So wouldn't that have been run through you? Um, not smaller purchases like that. Not a $10,000 purchase that's small? No, I, the board can handle that kind of purchase. They they can decide if that's wise or not. Does it take a board meeting to decide that? Um, I don't understand um, if it would take a board meeting the way you're thinking of. Maybe they can have a phone conference or if they are not all together. Because right. this is a traveling ministry, so we are always on the go. So. All right, so how many people are on the board? How many people does it take to have a phone call with? <coughs> I don't know. You don't I, know. I've told you I don't, I don't know the accurate amount. Instead of saying something, I'm telling you I don't know. All right, so when you're on a phone call during a board meeting, you have no idea how many people are on the other end of the phone. Uh, I don't, actually. I don't, I don't, at that time, I don't know. I don't, at this time, I do not know which, how many people. I, how do you get appointed to the board? Um, well, you have to go through, um, the right, uh, um, I don't know if we've ever come up with any, any kind of, uh, um, process like that other than credibility, you know, um, for myself and, uh, anybody who is qualified. What does that mean, do anybody something. that's qualified? Yeah, you have to qualified to be able to do um, ministry work, I mean, on that level, so. 
But tell me what that means. You have well, to I mean qualify. to be an administrator, to be um, ahead in the ministry. So how, how does one do that? I asked what the process was, and you don't know. Well, I mean, first of all, I need to know their credentials and what they've done in the past. So do you and review every applicant for the board? Of course. Do they make a written application? Uh, yes, um, and I don't know all the process. I don't know everything because I've stopped handling a lot of that over the years. So I have other people to handle those things for me. So I can't answer a lot of these questions. So you don't know how many are on the board or how you get to be on the board? Not, I know the process. I know kind of what we look for, but I, right now, because I am so busy and I can't do all of the inter internal stuff, I have, that's why I hired Michelle as an executive to handle this. And she was an executive at Weatherford. She was what? She was an executive for other companies before she came, or a good administrator, so I uh, <coughs> hired her to handle. Okay, but don't you have, as CEO, and your, I mean, your name's kind of associated with this, aren't you concerned that there could be people that um, taking advantage of the money in the ministry? Um, well, that's why I have CPAs and uh, CPAs? accountants uh, who, I mean, we are, hire our firms outward, outside of the ministry to go through the money to make sure that it's not happening. You can find out from Michelle. Who, I don't, who does it? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so, so it's not that I'm not giving you information like Rick is saying. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you well, where you can hard. get it from. You don't know the number of board members. You don't know who well, they are. You don't know how they get to be. And you don't know what happens to make a $10,000 purchase. As you get bigger in ministry like what I do, you don't handle all of that. I'm a preacher. I focus on the spiritual aspect of the ministry, and I have professionals who do the professional aspect. And that includes, that's Michelle almost exclusively, isn't it? Um, she's part of it. So, you so know, it doesn't she, bother you that, that Michelle can write a, herself a check for her rent and not clear it with you? That's not the way things go. That's not, well, I mean, you, you can, you can say. for her rent. But that's what you're trying to say. You're, you're falsifying information. No, okay, I mean, okay, let's stop right there. No, if you're saying I'm falsifying information, that's what you're doing. I'll pull the check. Give me the check. And Just because you can me, pull a check don't mean you're giving the right information. You're lying about that. What I'm, I'm saying, lying about yes, something? Just because that's there don't mean your opinion is a lie. So what I'm My saying, you is a lie. go to her and find out what it's about. Don't show me the check again. I already, I already saw it. So you're saying I am lying that this is says... No. She's not lying. Well, no, I'm not lying. saying that you're lying about this on here. I'm saying that your opinion is a lie. I, my opinion is nothing other than a check was written for Michelle's uh, you rent. Just, you just gave a connotation that... So you're saying she can just write out a check for herself and do this? That ain't how we operate. So what I'm saying to you... Go and find out. I can't tell you so all the you details. you can't tell me how it operates. I can't tell you all the legal uh, stuff the that they allow in the RIS for us okay. to operate. What you are the checks say, and balances that you have mm -hmm. to make sure nobody's scamming the money? A firm, a CPA firm, who checks and audits our books. But you don't know who they are? Um... I know Brown Smith and Wallace, not Brown Smith and Wallace, um, oh, I don't want to say, I get these names mixed up in numbers and stuff. But I, my thing is, I am not evading the answer. I'm telling you where you can go get it. So what I'm saying to you is accurate, so I don't go through this rigmarole with you all about this. What I'm trying to say is, mm -hmm. You have millions of dollars coming into this place, and you're constantly asking for money. And you can't tell me who can write checks, who can make decisions about writing checks, and how those things get authorized, or who's on the board, and who decides. Right? Because I've, I've done this for 25 years, okay. and I've established from the ground, and I have things already put in place that I don't have to go back and check like that. Not like that. I have that system set up. So What's if you want to know, 
ask the person who I have in charge. And that's Michelle. Exactly. Okay, there's an October 24th, 2013 check. JMMI wrote for $250,000 as a down payment for a Chesterfield home. Mm -hmm. What does that go to? That was a down payment to purchase the residential center in St. Louis on Tempage. And that came from JMMI? Yes. Uh, funds. Is there yes. a uh, mortgage on it? Yes. And who holds the mortgage? Uh, Harold Lewis. Who's he? He's the former, or oh, he's the owner or former owner, or the person we are buying the house from. So, but you're also, I recall you testifying that you're leasing this house with the documents show for $6,500 a month. That's just a lease to own. You don't have a lease to own. Well, that's what our agreement is. A <coughs> lease to own? Our original intentions is to buy the home, and that's what we're doing. And so, that's the agreement. What's the agreement? that we are buying the home, we are purchasing the home, but we are leasing to own at this time. But the $250,000 is our earnest money to purchase the home. Who's Harold Lewis in this? How do you know him? Um, he's the owner of the home that was trying to sell the home. Do you have a land contract? <laughs> yes, I think we do. I'm not, don't quote me on that. But it's, I mean, Michelle would be the best person to answer that. So you question. gave Mr. Lewis um, $250,000 mm -hmm. as a down payment and in addition to that you pay him $6,500 a month. Yes. The ministry pays that. But you didn't provide us with a with a land contract, you provided us with a lease. Okay, so maybe that's what that is. I can't... I, I'm going to show you a residential lease. For okay. JMMI uh, for the, how do you pronounce it, Tim, Timpage, Tim, Tim mm -hmm. property for six, um, six thousand five hundred dollars a month in rent beginning November 1st, 2013 and ending on January 1st, 2016. Mm -hmm. And it talks about uh, security deposit of sixty five hundred and that you're going to pay lease of 6500 It doesn't anywhere talk about recognition of a down payment or a... Uh, Which should. It should. Yeah. Or if it don't, then, like I say, you need to, it would be good to go to Michelle. She's handled if this. This is $250,000, and know. you're not up to speed on what this I is about? I am up to speed on that. And what it is... It was a big purchase. I know what we did on that. What does this say? Residential lease. This is lease to own. I, Show me where it says lease to own. Show me right anywhere. Here. Residential lease. I mean, lease. oh, residential lease. Right. Also, you're just trying to say that what I'm saying, lease to own, is not. A, it's well, not on this document, is it? Well, I am sharing with you, this is the conversation we had with the owner of the house. And this is why we put down $250,000 earnest money for that, toward that. Where's the document that says? Well, we had, hold on. We <laughs> asked for this. Mm-hmm. The document that says you're purchasing that. Yes. Where is that? Um, I think you should have that. I don't know I why don't you have don't. It. Well, maybe we can ask her about that. She should be able to provide that to I, you. I would like, uh, if you can make note of this, Dave, I would like a copy of whatever the purchase agreement is or whatever document that shows the $250,000 because it doesn't make any sense. Just let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that these lease payments are to be applied to the ultimate purchase price? Well, that's a question. What's I the guess, purchase price? I'm just asking if he understands that. Yes, of course. Well, I mean, you do, do you know what the purchase price of the product, yes, project is? I do. It's $2.5 million. Dollars, okay. And we are putting down a total of 500 k We have only put down 250 at this time. Uh, and um, the 600 
and uh, six thousand five hundred dollars is the lease. Now, as you know, that a, a lease for that amount of money. This was a personal situation we worked out with the owner. Yeah, I'm just you trying know? to understand what she's trying to understand. Yeah, it doesn't well, make sense. Well, I mean, it's, and it's not legal. I can tell you that because anything legal. No. Anything that deals with land uh -huh. must be in writing. Yes. And you have a lease that expires in 2016. Um, I, I just don't think you probably have all the documents here, but we should have more than that. So I would rather you ask about that um, because we just got out of What's a, the property uh, called? Uh, Tempitch. T-I? Yeah. You, that's the. I'm sorry. That's the, the street. Uh, yeah, the street name. Tempich, yeah. But they call it the uh, P A I G E. G -E. Mm -hmm. They call it the residential center. Mm -hmm. right. And the two hundred fifty thousand dollar check is written on October twenty fourth, two thousand and thirteen. Mm -hmm. And the beginning of this lease is November first. Mm. So it doesn't make any sense. Is it 2.25 million purchase? Is that the yeah, deal? Yeah, 2.2. 2.5, 2. 2. 2. yeah. 2.5? Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Okay. Okay. So you put $250,000 down and then signed a lease saying you'd pay 600, I'm sorry, $6,500,000 a month more beginning right then and through January 1st, 2016, which is less, you know, it's 10 months, 11 months away. Yeah. So what that's happens the, then? That's the interest rate on the, on the home, actually. Um, $6,500 a month is the interest rate you're paying? On a... Um, well, that's what he was paying uh, on that property um, on a two two million uh, a two million dollar loan against it, and I think he pays five thousand, and the other fifteen hundred was for the taxes. So that's just the three percent interest rate I think Bank of America locked him into. So we we are starting to take over the home and show earnest money to purchase it. We took over also the uh, the um, the interest month interest uh, payments a month. Who who provided this <coughs> lease for you to sign? Um, you signed it, didn't you? I think I probably did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, who provided it? Harold and his lawyer. And who represented you? Um, well, I have a uh, lawyer who's, um, we just actually had a meeting with him, and one of the things he did put in the contract that he forgot to mention was um, uh, that that was a down payment, which is supposed to be in there. Of course. What do you mean, yeah. of course? That you, it's, this it's makes there. no sense. Then go None. to the right people and find out what you need to well, know. See, that's what my concern is. You're uh, you know, Debbie Frazier gives $1.1 million, and then you go put $250,000 as a down payment that's mm -hmm. not reflected anywhere. But that, and it that looks don't have like to be her money. On, we uh, we had other Sir, large I'm, contributors. I'm uh, you have other large contributors that year that were over a million? Well, they gave it in collectibles, but I raised that money on the, on the road as much as she gave as well that year. That was a high year for us. But because I'm telling she was you, the big donor. So don't look and say that that's her money because that money could have come from other parts of the money that came in that year too. So don't, don't do but that. But don't you have an obligation to behave responsibly with these That donations? is responsible. Show I'm, me, show I'm me investing. Where, you excuse me. Show me where the $250,000 down payment and, and the rent to own comes in. Well, I'd rather you get the information from Michelle because the way you're making this look is not, this is responsible. Uh, you probably don't have everything you need to see here. Maybe you don't have enough documents. But I know what we did. I signed this. I remember that. And I'm a very wise businessman. So 
is it would be in direct <laughs> conflict with what you've told me is your intent. Well, it didn't get reflected in this document you, that you signed. You can say whatever time. you want, you know. You can lie and do whatever you want. But uh, sir, I'm not lying. That's a document you, you provided. Well, your opinion is a lie, you know. <sighs> we have total proof of all of this, so it's no it's nothing And you'll provide it, is that your no, Mr. Total Potts? proof, of course. So <laughs> When people are going to donate money, do you say we want to buy a $2.5 million house and that's why we need it? Do you give them any kind of notice of what uh, um, your, your game plan is for buying? No, uh, actually I'm very transparent with the people, with the money. They know how much comes in. I tell them and so how much we raise. What people are you referring to? The people, the when I'm in front of them, I share with them the money that comes in and what we're using it for. And did you, did I'm basically, you disclose that it was going for this <coughs> $2.5 million house? Uh, no, because I don't oh. have to share that. But what I do share with them is our discussions with the banks where we're trying to get a loan from the bank for about two years and we were turned down by 15. And so, um, so you they, more they money? want um, they want to. Um, you were turned on by 15 banks? Because they don't give money to, they, in this economy, they weren't giving money to nonprofits or churches. They don't want to do that. So we were trying to um, find out, you know, what would be their road of integrity to show them earnestly. And so they said it would be good if we had purchased property and things that showed equity. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the ministry purchased that home, is to start uh, creating a bigger portfolio before the banks. So, You didn't accomplish that by that document. We did. You just don't have everything here. So you can keep your opinion. Um, so you don't tell them that you're buying the house. You just say we need more money to show the bank we can borrow more money. Yes, I share with them about purchasing real estate and just things like that. But things you, that the ministry needs to do to become strong before the bank. All right, so you don't say we just put a 250000 down payment. Um, oh, yeah, I have shared that with them. Uh, on stage in your group? Yeah, I have shared that, yeah. I thought you just said I don't have to share with the people. Well, I wrote that it, down. It was the context you said it in at that time. But you asked me now, did I share it with them? I said I did. I have. I'm very open about that. All right. On March 17, <coughs> 2014, there was a check to Hope Jones and Associates for $7,500 as a retainer. Mm -hmm. What was that for? That was concerning. They are our. Um, they're the ones that's basically doing the bank hunting and that kind of thing. The for bank us. hunting. For I don't know what to call it, but they're. I don't know the legal word to call it, but they are um, they are consultants, and they have connections with the banks and VIPs. So, with banks, banks and VIPs, mm -hmm. you have to answer yes or no. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're using them to do what? Uh, to um, actually find a bank that would give us a loan, so that we don't have to keep using our cash. For what? For ministry. You want to take out a loan to conduct the ministry? No, to to build what we need. What is, what is it you're building? I mean, we have other things we need to do: television, TV studio, TV. I mean, media, everything. So it it takes money to do that. So you don't want to have to keep using your cash for that, right? So the cash that comes in on the collection plate, yes, the bucket. Mm -hmm. Is using the cash, yes, of the ministry. It's hard. What should the cash for the ministry be used for? <coughs> well, we, we want to be wise stewards with, with what God give us in the collection plate. So to keep just spending raw cash to purchase everything, it's hard. So we're trying to develop a stronger relationship with the banks to uh, front us money so that we can be a more wiser investor with what we have. So you think it's better to take out a loan than to pay for it as you go? 
Well, you know, eventually it gets very hard. I mean, I think it's good you pay for everything cash as you start out and build a foundation, but if you're going to do bigger things, you need a financial institution to help front money. So, it's and wiser. That's wiser to you? It is wiser. And then you don't use your cash to pay the, the mortgage? I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, if they give you a loan, it's going to be a loan, right? And you have to mm -hmm. pay it. Yes, but okay. that gives us time. It's about time and raising more finance through time. So it's, it just don't, I mean, may, large corporations to do this. So I'm sure you know what that is. And you compare yourself to a large corporation? Well, it, that's not the point. The point is about wisdom, what, how money is used in a wise way to build. Uh, do you have a financial consultant? Yes, who they are there? financial consultants. That's who they are. Yes. All right, on April 29, 2014, and May 8, 2014, JMMI paid over $6,000 for pool repairs. Where would that have been done? That was at the home. What home? The home that we purchased, the ministry purchased. The residential center? Mm hmm the residential center. And so you had to pay $6,000 for the pool? Yeah, it's, some things were broken there, so need to replace some things. Even though you're leasing that home? <clears throat> no, we're purchasing the home. We're purchasing it. Do you have a deed? Um, no, I don't think so. We are purchasing the home. <clears throat> so did you tell the, the donors that you were going to spend $6,000 of it, to, their donations, to fix the pool? That's not how that works. No, I'm sure it doesn't. No. Yeah, you don't we don't them. have to tell them all those details, but if we purchase something that the ministry is going to own, we believe in keeping it up in excellence. So if something is broken, we need to fix it. All right, on July 22, 2014, you paid $550 to Elegant Jewelers in Birmingham, Alabama. GMI did. What was that for? I don't know. I don't know what that have no knowledge of that. Do you think you should have knowledge of it? No, I have people who are taking care of that. So it's okay for somebody to buy jewelry? I don't think they purchase jewelry. You need to... It's a jewelry store. Really, <coughs> you need to really go and find out what that was about. It, it's an elegant jewelers. I don't know what that was about. Okay. Was Debbie Frazier the beneficiary of that? I don't know what that's about. I really I can't answer you don't know. that. No. Do you tell your donors that you're buying jewelry? We don't buy jewelry. Okay. What we do, we go there and we uh, we um, we liquidate jewelry. Uh, I know that, but I don't know if that was the case there. So but we don't, you we pay have them bought, to liquidate? We have bought no jewelry from nowhere, from what I know of. I'm not aware of that. So you probably need to go ask Michelle about what that purchase was instead of having another opinion that breeds lies. Mr. Potts, I would like you to, if you wouldn't mind, ask him to stop using that word. Don't use the term lie. Yeah. Thank you. Just, you have a difference of opinion. <coughs> she's okay. not lying. Yeah. She's asking you questions. Okay. And you just answer them. You don't have to volunteer information. Just answer the question. Okay. If you can. Okay. Don't involve yourself in colloquy. Okay. On July 24th, 2014, you paid $1,000 to the Smith Anderson Law Firm, and then another $1,000 on October 21st, and then 2000 on March 3rd. What was that firm used for? Um, I don't know. I can't tell you. No idea what you hired a law firm for <coughs> and spent $4,000 on? I can't tell you. You probably need to go. We, we did this one, right? Oh, that's true. 
it, Jeff Wiseman was an attorney you hired also, you recall that? Um, I think we, I do, but I'm not, um. It was just in September. In September. He specializes in foreclosures, things like that. Yeah, I think that's our land attorney with this, with the temp age, because he stepped in to, uh, uh, for the, the forwarding of what we're doing with the home. The other for two. For the what? The forwarding of the purchase of the home that we have. What do you mean the having, forwarding of? Well, you know, the proceeding, proceeding toward doing that. We were supposed to put 20% down on the home, not only what you normally do when you purchase a home of that size with a bank is usually 500k, but we only put down 250, and we're supposed to put down the other 250. And he's the lawyer that we hired. He's drawn up all the contract concerning that, with that as well. So that's part of the purchase. That's part of the process of the, um, I guess, the other papers you need. So. So you're going to give this Mr. Lewis another two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's the twenty percent down on the. When's home. that supposed to happen? Um, I'm not sure. They all. You know, they're Well, if you've got the money to pay another two hundred fifty thousand dollars, how about using some of that money to pay Debbie? You don't have to miss that question. Okay, that's not a question; it's a statement. All right. You testified at your last deposition that JMMI owns three vehicles: a BMW, a Mercedes, and a Bentley. Yes. Okay. Where is the uh, BMW located? It's in St. Louis. Where? Um, at the Residential center. And what about the Mercedes? Same. It's at the residential center. And the yes. Bentley? <coughs> yes. Residential center? Yes. And where are the keys to that located? Okay, Same place. Have you driven those cars? Yes. Is Michelle? No. We usually have a driver. No. So what are those cars used, used for? Um, basically, when I have guests that come in town or um, anytime ministry um, What'd you events, say? anytime ministry events. Anytime, anytime, oh, anytime ministry events. Ministry events. We have that kind of thing. What do you mean we have that kind of thing? I'm sorry, what you say? You, you said anytime we have ministry events, we have that. That kind of thing. I said that kind of thing. Yeah, what do you mean that kind of a thing? A ministry event. Right. Mm -hmm. Something, a crusade or maybe a service or um, a, uh, some kind of ministry function. Say it that way. In St. Louis? It could be St. Louis. It could be here or other places. But usually we keep them residentially there in St. Louis. So you, you drive like the Bentley to Detroit or Taylor? No, don't do that. All right, so are those pretty much used exclusively in St. Louis? Mostly exclusive in St. Louis. And you said, but you use a driver a lot. I know she have a driver here today, two mm -hmm. of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do you have two drivers today? Well, they're not just drivers. They're just adjutants. That's they're what? They're Adjutants or adjutants or security, you want to call it that. What was security. the word used? Added adjutant. That's that's a church term. So let's just say security. security Maybe you understand for that. Better. Who? For who? Yeah. For whom? <laughs> for me, I guess. I I am the the ones that's here with me, right? You you require security. Yeah. I've, yes. Why? Well, I mean, doing ministry or being in the public is very sometimes dangerous. And um, you have crazy people out there. And they have done crazy things, so. To you? Well, try to at least. Like what? I mean, any minister that is in front of the masses will go through something like that. You think that any minister who has security? I mean, the Pope has a, a, no, he a thing that 
He actually that, doesn't. Yeah, that that he, rides, he drives a Focus. No, you know, no, no. I'm talking so about. So you're that. Sa you're equating yourself with the Pope? No, okay. I'm saying that uh, you know that little thing he buys costs two million dollars or how many of a million? That's a bulletproof, right? He doesn't so, drive that. Well, somebody he drives use him. It. Well, what no, I'm saying to hold you. On. That Pope Francis Catholic, does not Let me use say this, it. the Catholic Church spend billions of dollars on security. So don't... So I mean, you're saying that you're like the Catholic no, Church? No, but I'm saying the little security that I do have, you know, don't try to um, degrade that. Because no, there are places you that you, you all it. know that have security, so it, it's not a big deal. I, don't, I personally do not know of one pastor <laughs> that uses security. Not well, one. That's not true. Can you tell me any others that do? <laughs> Many. Name one. Um, um, Pat Robinson. Oh, you, you equate yourself with those folks, those TV folks. Well, um, I mean, we're, we're all doing the same kind of ministry, basically, around the world. So we, we have security because things happen, so it's, it's important. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of people just coming in churches, shooting people and stuff. So it's important to have that. It's important, important to have security. security are these yes. people armed? No, they're not armed. So what kind of security could they provide? Are they supposed well, to take the bullet? They're just here to help. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you no, say? seriously, what, what do you need a security <laughs> force for? <laughs> and, and can I ask who pays them? <laughs> I mean, he's been there all day, two of them. So who pays those folks? Well, they are actually volunteers. Those two are volunteers. And so they aren't compensated at all? Well, I mean, that ain't, you know, they that understand. Ain't? They understand. I'm from the country, so I say ain't, so. <laughs> they understand but, what? Um, they understand that they are volunteers and they're here to help. But they are really greatly blessed through this ministry, so. They're not being misused like you're trying to assume. No, I, I actually am. What do you mean greatly blessed through the ministry? Well, I mean, they are compensated, so. Okay, that's what in, I'm asking. In their own way. Mm -hmm. How? How do you compensate? Well, I mean, I Compensate can't in their tell own you, way. What does that mean? I can't tell you that money is always the best compensation. Okay, just Other things. Tell me so. what they are. Well, they're getting blessed through the ministry and the work of what we're doing, so their families and their life, so. So they're blessed, mm -hmm. and that's their compensation? It could be one of them. And what would be another one? Um, I couldn't, I don't know any other at this time. But you're saying you don't give them money? Yeah, they're not on salary, if that's what you're saying. No, are they no. given any money? <coughs> no, we, I mean, we, they are a part of the ministry, and they do, um, benefit from being around and being in different um, events and things we do that blesses them and their family. So they're appreciative of that. It's something that you may not have I'm just wondering for. who, mm -hmm. how they pay their own bills. Well, you got to ask them. If they're volunteering them. all day. You got to ask them. But they're blessed from the <laughs> ministry somehow. You got to ask them. That's their life. <sighs> The three cars that we've talked about, in whose name are the titles? Um, they're in the ministry name. They're all in JMMI? I think everything except the Bentley. Whose name is the Bentley in? Uh, it's in DeWin McDill. I'm sorry? DeWin McDill. I need you to spell that. D-E-W-I-N-N. -N. DeWin? Yes, McDill. Spell the last name? Is it, uh, is it a person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what's the last name? M-C-D-I-L-L. -L. DeWin McDill. <laughs> and who is if he? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, he's one of the pastors in Montana that's in our organization. Pastors okay. in Montana? Mm -hmm. And he lets you keep uh, <coughs> the Bentley in St. Louis? Uh, yes. And who is authorized to drive that car? Um, a driver or anybody in the ministry that's one of my drivers. I have a question just from a you know you minister the poor and the sick and all that it does isn't it a little offensive to be driving around in a Bentley and a Mercedes to people that really um, you know are impoverished and sick and ill and, and AIDS and drug rehab isn't it a little offensive to 
sort of being uh, showplacing mm -hmm. what you have? Well, dear one, I, I don't uh, showplace the people, and I'm I'm not well, in Bentley. that car. You don't see me driving around in that car every day. I don't do that. But it's in you the know? ministry. Everybody <laughs> no. in the ministry sees you. You said you drive it. Uh, I have and before. You just asked me have I drove it, but it ain't something I drive every day or even every year. I don't do that. I have drivers who pick up my guests, my high-profile guests, politicians, uh, pastors, who would celebrities, a high profile, high movie profile, stars. Movie stars. Mm -hmm. Who would the movie stars be? <clears throat> Just different ones. Well, name name a couple. Uh, I can name one. Richard T. Jones. Richard, I'm not familiar with him. Richard T. Jones mm -hmm. is a movie star. Yeah. What about another one? Um, that's the only one I have for now. That's the only one you know for now. Okay, mm -hmm. and when you say a high-profile guest, you said politicians. Yeah, if Who it's a that? politician, name, if there would name be a couple one. of those. Um, I used to. Um, um, what's um, Gil? He he used, to, but he's not no more. He's out of office now. But um, he used to be the. Uh, I think the Secretary of Agriculture in that place, in the, at the um, at the Capitol. Secretary so, of Agriculture. Yeah. You picked up in a in a Bentley from no, the airport. No, I didn't say I did that, but he it came. Would, it would be people who I would know like that. Okay, give me a couple names that you'd need a Bentley to drive around. Well, I I'm, I can't give you that. You can't. No. But do you see no. my point that people that. Mm -hmm. um, are suffering and giving you whatever their last dime is and, mm -hmm. and donations and mm -hmm. you know drug habits mm -hmm. to have them see you drive around your high profile guests in a Bentley or Mercedes might be offensive and hurtful even. It, it could be offensive if they didn't know my life but they oh. know my life. It, it would be offensive to someone like you who's trying to make it bad you know okay. but you know. So it's important attitude, you have a Bentley. It ain't really important that don't make me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, then you also have um, a Land Rover that you lease. Uh, Range Rover. Range Rover. Yes, it's not a Land Rover, it's a Range Rover. Which is the better one, I don't even know. <coughs> I don't know. Um, They're just cars, that's all. All right, then there's a series of documents that total almost $50,000. Mm -hmm. um, to limo land mm -hmm. in 2013 and 14. Um, mm -hmm. you, you have to answer yes. And yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's mark these as an exhibit. I asked earlier about the Bentley and there were two exhibits marked the first half. Do you want to start with three or do you want to? Yeah. I'll show you that. <laughs> market is three and I'll ask you to identify this came from Joshua Media Ministries did it not yes mm -hmm. okay and it deals with October 1st to October 31st okay does it could you acknowledge that on the top yes mm -hmm. okay um, <coughs> October 9th 2013 mm -hmm. There was ten thousand dollars paid to Limo Land. Yes. And that's in St. Louis. Mm, no, that should be in Springfield. Oh, not Springfield, Missouri, but in in Missouri somewhere. It's not in St. Louis. But it's in. <coughs> it's in Missouri. The state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. You have to answer yes. For yes. That. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was that for? That uh, was to cut the Mercedes into a limo. It was to cut the Mercedes into a limo. And who needs that? No, that's for guests. It's for guests. And for mm -hmm. you? It's mostly when for guests. When you're entertaining guests. guests? Yes. When you're entertaining? Well, I'm not. When we have guests come in, high profile people, we, mm -hmm. we um, you we have treat to have a limo. them that way. Don't have to have a limo, but. In, in we, a Mercedes limo. We treat them. You treat them? 
I said that we have hospitality. Maybe that's a better word. <clears throat> okay, then. And this is not the first one the ministry has had. We oh, had that's another the first. Mercedes limousine. Oh. Yes, right. So, this what happened is, to that? Um, okay. Mm -hmm. What happened to that one? Um, I gave up um, everything so that I could uh, um, do ministry on a higher level. You gave up everything. Mm -hmm. You have to answer yes or no. Yes. Mm -hmm. What does that mean you gave up everything? Well, you know, I didn't have to, but I voluntarily reduced my whole life so that I could, um, that was in 2005 to 2007, so that I could. Um, About the time you filed bankruptcy? Uh, well, I had to because of the, the, me trying to give up the home and some other stuff I share with what David. Do mean, what do you mean me trying to give up the home? Well, I mean, basically I. You were um, bankrupt. Well, not really. I, I, not really? That was bad advice. Just someone gave me bad advice. But you filed for bankruptcy and were yeah, adjudicated but, a bankrupt? Yeah, but okay. it's just bad advice. So I you call giving up everything, buying a 2.5 million house and having a Bentley and a Mercedes that and was, a limo? That was years ago, what I'm saying. So what, what was you're years trying ago? to say is uh, you're not... You're not uh, well, tell me what was years ago. I, I don't understand. <clears throat> two, I gave you the dates. The, I mean, the date. I mean, the when you years, went bankrupt, about that time you decided to scale back. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't. I didn't file bankruptcy because we were because of that. That wasn't the. Well, no, reason. you had debt. Well, yes. Um, you wanted because, to discharge debt. Well, no, it just wasn't that actually. What it was, was it? cutting back so that I could reach. Um, more people in the ministry. Okay, you're going to have to explain to me how filing bankruptcy is cutting back so that you I can... I never said that. Hold, you're you're no, putting no. words in my mouth. Um, it's lying again. You can know? you read that David, back? David, yeah. David. David. Okay, where is it? All right, I just did... She's lying, man. Don't. You know. oh, it's all lying. I understand. Wait, I want to ask this one. So then you spent another $5,000. I'm looking for did my note. No, that's okay. I, I know what he said. Okay. Uh, so you paid limo land almost $50,000 total. Almost 50000 And that was to for them. what? To, to make a limo. To cut the Mercedes into a limo. And, and you think that was a good use of the money that people donated to you in JMMI? Well, I mean, the banks certainly um, have looked at that on our books as good because it has an appraisal value of almost 200 k a little over 150000 What year is the Mercedes? Um, I don't know. I f forget what year that is. So did you at all mention to Mrs. Frazier that when she gave you over a million dollars that you were going to use <coughs> almost 50000 of of ministry money to make a limo? We didn't use her money to make a limo. Did we had money her? beside her money. So. Yeah, but did you tell her that you were you know, going to use that ministry money for a limo? Uh, again, I want to say to you for the record that her money was not used for a limo. We, we brought in way more money than just her donors. donations. Some donors. It don't matter. The point is the ministry brought that in and so you cannot tell us how we allocated that and use her money for that. So her money went into a whole system of things. So but hold on. So but you got this from donations and you decided to use it to make a limo. Uh we really invested really good. The banks No, no really I'm just think asking that. if that's what you did. No, not the way you're saying it. It's you're fortifying, forging. I'm forging. Um, oh yeah, you are. I mean, David, with your mouth. David, yeah. Just the question is. Okay. Did you use the money for the purpose? No. Of, the answer is yes. So, yeah, you had yeah, donations. You, you, the money, you used the money. Of course, I used then it. That's but, okay. okay. You don't have to go through a defensive mechanism. It's, okay. Yeah. You got the money. Use the money. But what about the way she's making this? Don't sound? worry about that. Yeah. Just answer the question. Okay. I can deal with the spin part of it. Okay. You just right. answer the question, and don't get argumentative. Okay. We're going to show you um, a bunch of 
JMMI bank statements and so that would be four. Is that the bond four or do we all four? Oh, is this the same thing? Yeah, they're all, oh, gotcha. all be marked number four. And they're gonna show clothing charges mm -hmm. by JMMI. Yes. Do you spend any of your salary on clothing? Um some. That's fine. <laughs> well, we get that work. That's it. Yeah. Can you make ten? I'm going to show you exhibit <coughs> number four. Okay. I need and. On November 29th, 2013, JMMI paid over $6,000 to Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. Yes. What would that be for? Well, this is for clothes concerning my TV ministry as well. Oh, you have to wear Louis Vuitton? Oh, it don't matter what name it is. The point is clothing are allocated to us for ministry purposes as well. What do you mean they're allocated to you? You know, in a media ministry. In a what? Media ministry. Yeah. Okay, or on the road, when I'm always traveling and using my clothes, I'm sweating through them. So I'm needing new clothes also for television ministry through the years, so. And so um, you use ministry money to buy your wardrobe? Outfit. Your it's outfit. called, it's allocated more towards uh, ministry um, apparel. Okay, and where is that kept? Um, in St. Louis. In, in your home? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you get, uh, does that go into what your income is? I'm sorry. I do you show that in your income that you got Louis Vuitton clothing? No, that's not. That's That, that, that doesn't show. Because it don't go there. It don't go there. Mm -mm, I don't no. know what that means. It don't belong there. That's out of place. What's out of place? You don't get taxed on things like that. That's okay. for that's for ministry business purpose. So it's not Louis Vuitton. Well, it's you can call whatever you want. Well, then you had a month later men's warehouse for a thousand dollars. Were these for you? Yeah, those were suits for the TV ministry. And do you wear them when you're not on the TV? Uh, no, only to minister in them when I'm traveling. Right, when you're so on I TV a, or otherwise you wear them. Yeah, television ministry. But not always when you're just on TV. Always. Either I'm being filmed when I'm up traveling around the nation or so when like I'm at my TV So the clothes you're wearing now, are those purchased <coughs> by JMMI? No, this was actually purchased by me. Okay. <coughs> then you, you spent um, mm -hmm. another $724 for the Italian collection clothes mm -hmm. in April. Yeah, I'm always buying suits. Uh, always, well, not always, but always whenever we need when we need them. So. Whenever <coughs> we, isn't it just you? Well, I mean, because I'm the main one out front, you know, other than that, I would sweat through all of my personal clothes, and they wouldn't last long. So the Who ministry else does the provides. ministry buy clothes for? Well, the the ministry team, if they need suits or things for uniforms for the ministry. So uniforms. Mm -hmm. What kind of you have to answer? Suits, you? black suits, or um, anything that goes for choir or um, so ushering. Your, or your person out there that's a driver, did you buy his black suit? I don't, I'm not quite sure if that was bought. I don't know if they paid for that one themselves or I can't tell you. But we do. We have purchase suits for people because they work and um, it could be wear and tear on your personal clothes and tear them up. So, so June 2014, you spent $3,500 by JMMI to Versace in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, I'm sure that's right. If that's. If it shows there. 
And those were, that was for closing for you? Yes, probably. Yes, most likely. So you, you don't see that there's any problem when you're ministering to the poor, the sick, the needy, to mm -hmm. be appearing in Louis Vuitton and Versace? Well, that ain't something I purchase all the time. Um, well, it looks like you did several no, times in... Uh, I mean, I, I'm a very frugal person when it comes to this. I go to the right places to get a lot of suits, and if I get some from those places, you don't see that. You don't see, I don't see Macy's. No, you don't see that you know, because Macy's don't have the kind of suits that I wear. But what I'm saying is this, this Louis Vuitton things, you don't see that in our charges all the time. We usually well, I get see the in 2000 and <coughs> the belts? Yes. In 2000, and, I see you're wearing a Burberry belt. Same kind of thing. You go to the top of the line. That's an expensive What's belt. What's the way you're making it look quite true? Yeah. 2013 and 14, you spent over, Jam and I spent over $30,000 in your clothes. Does that mm -hmm. sound about right? Uh, what, what year was that? 13 and 14. Oh, God, yes, because I was traveling so much it, and, and sweating through all my clothes. Exactly. That probably wasn't enough because just have so. But they have to be top of the line expensive ones. No, they are not top of the line clothes. Louis Vuitton's not top of the line? Those not where I get my suits from. Well, you got something the, from them for yeah. spent thousands and thousands. Well, the the belts are more lasting, so that's good. Come on, you're buying belts for five thousand dollars? No, I mean okay. I multiple belts, not just, just one. Just for the record, reflect. Yeah. There's an entry at Joe Banks here in uh, June's 11th of 14, one of the bottom feeding stores in the United States. Well, so how about? I just like to call your attention to that once you've circled. How about that. the Gucci store? I'd rather August. talk about Joe Banks. No, I'm, I, we'll get to that. August 2014, you went to the Gucci store in Troy and purchased something? Yeah. Um, what like I say, be? it probably was a belt or maybe shoes. I, I don't belt know. Or shoes. But I don't usually buy my suits from these very expensive places. I just get the, the things that I invest in will last longer, like, such as belts. So you got to go to shoes. Gucci or places like that? Well, no, there's. I buy those things from there because uh, they have a better TV appearance for the belt. For asking for money from the poor? Mm, I mean, honestly, uh, it ain't really like the way you're making it look. So Tell me how it is. Well, I mean, I don't think you want to hear what I need to tell well, you. Well, it sounds <laughs> like you have to drive Bentleys and limousines and Dave, wear Gucci. Dave, <laughs> just answer. If there's a question, ask of you. To yeah. answer the question, okay. the rest of it's just <laughs> okay. by play. You, I, okay. you like to look like money. <laughs> no, no, <Okay. laughs> no. Um, <laughs> you paid a thousand dollars to Monture Clothing <coughs> in New York, and then another seven hundred and fifteen. Whose clothing was that for? Where's that now? I don't understand. August first, you know, October twenty-eighth. <laughs> total of over seventeen hundred dollars to Monsieur Clothing in New York. I don't, I'm not, I don't know about that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Debbie Frazier and the payment of your legal fees. Okay. <coughs> Go ahead. What is that? Debbie Frazier in any way whatsoever contribute to the payment of any of your legal fees? Uh, yes, but... Okay. Actually, <coughs> I didn't know she had did that until afterwards, so. What do you mean? You, when was it and to whom? Uh, you don't have to answer that question. Okay. Yeah, that's not privilege. Yes, it is. If Debbie Anything Frazier... Anything related to his legal fees, how, what, amount, when, how, is privilege. I, I will ask the court privilege. about that because it's not attorney-client it privilege. Once you, start, once you start talking about how much, the nature of the engagement, dates and times and places, it's privileged. Okay, here, here there you is... You can ask questions that are not related to what happens between him and his counsel or I, lawyers. I'm not asking about it between him yes, and his counsel. Yes, you are. No, you're getting I asked right there. who paid it. Now, for example, <coughs> uh, August 27th, 2000... You can say, if he knows, did someone pay a sum certain on a date? If he, if he okay. knows. If he doesn't know, then he can't answer the question. All right. Well, well you, what you said was you didn't know it at the time, but you became aware of it later. Correct? Uh, do I answer? That's you can what answer he said. that question. Yes. Yes, okay. you can answer and that question. What did you find out later? Objection. Yeah. A on what basis? Privilege. Attorney client privilege. 
I don't think it's an attorney. I do. Well, hold on. I, I do. I really do. Debbie Frazier. No. What did he determine about payment of his attorney fees? I'm asking him what Debbie Frazier, what he found out about Debbie Frazier. What she told him, if she told him anything. However. Do you know that Debbie Frazier paid your attorney fees? If you know. Um, yes, I found out. Yes, you found that out? Yeah. In the amount of $7,500? Um, I don't know exactly how much it was. Well, there's August 2014, there is a $7,500 deposit, and then in September 2000, I gotta read my. Um, actually, I, I have fake lenses in there that are supposed to be able to let me do this. On the same day, income $7,500 and out goes $7,500, Frazier versus Frazier retainer fee for Hertz Schramm. So is it your understanding, and this is JMMI documents, that <laughs> Debbie Frazier gave you the $7,500 or on your behalf? Not that I know of, no. Well, what I, did you find out later? I just found out that she paid for some legal fees for me to have an attorney. So that, is I mean, that all, all the details I know. Yeah, would would that be the Hertz Schramm people or some other lawsuit? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I well, can't. is there some other lawsuit you're involved in? Not that I know of, no. Okay. So was it your understanding that Debbie Frazier paid your legal fees to Hertz Schramm as invoiced in and out on Honestly, the JMI? Honestly, don't, I don't know who it was given to. I just heard that it happened. So you probably want to ask Michelle that. When did you hear this? Um, I can't remember. I, I don't know exactly. Who'd when. you hear it from? Um, Michelle shared it with me. So Michelle told you that mm -hmm. Debbie Frazier paid your legal fees? Yeah. And, and you see this here where it says $7,500 coming in? Okay, I see that. And what? on the same day, seven. What is this now? Is this? What this account is from is this? you. This is Jam of Mine. Oh, okay. Okay. And then, Colleen is fourth. Okay. He's got to change the desk real quick so we can change the desk. Okay. It's a great okay. kind of step. We're going off the record. It is 4:30 p.m. Yeah.